Ladies and gentlemen, um, we're going to introduce you to a Nobel Prize, Nobel Peace Prize winner that openly admitted that he um, raped, molested, had sexual relations with hundreds, literally hundreds of children. Now, we got the receipts. We're going to show you like we always do. So stick around. Don't go to nowhere. We will be right, right, right back. Let me find my buttons. I get confused, but I got it. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in to Too Strong, where two strong is always better than one. And Too Strong always got receipts. We always got receipts. So this is, um, let's frame this up real fast. This guy is a, a doctor and a Nobel Peace Prize winner by the name of Daniel Carlton Gajusic, Gajusic, Gujusic, or whatever his disgusting name is. He was, was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, he's expired now. So... Um, at any rate, <clears throat> this dude literally confessed to molesting, raping, whatever, however you want to call it. It's a violation for violating hundreds, I think he said four or five hundred, but hundreds of children. Now, if he admitted to doing it to hundreds, then more than likely there's more. But or maybe maybe he's telling the truth because the way he openly said he did this stuff, it appears that he honestly believes that he ain't did nothing wrong because he sat there and talked about it. So you'd be shocked to find out, uh, <laughs> thanks to our master researcher, downtown Brown, you'd be shocked to find out that he dug in and found Dr. Fauci is connected to this whole thing. So we're going to dig into that. Also, we're going to bring this whole thing to a circle and the, the Boston, what's that? The Boston children's hospital mm -hmm. is tied to this. This is sickening. Now, when we first start going, we went so far. And then uh, while I was doing some other stuff, Merlin dug some more and, and found out the, the connection to Fauci. This was not even intentional. It just happened on the way down the hole. So um, let's get this thing broken down. But before before we do that, let's let you all do us a favor. Uh, we worked really hard on this one. We really did. So um, if you could do us a favor and give us a, a like and a share, a like and a share real fast. Let's get more people to the room wow oh yeah we need more people here really bad <laughs> really bad oh that's really bad i don't even think we should we should maybe cancel this show and do this tomorrow ain't nobody showing up yeah yeah we might want to yeah we might want to do this one tomorrow because it's not can y'all like and share like and share like and share like and share share this up because this got to okay we getting there come on pick it up because we don't want to we we want to get it right <laughs> get it right and and the way y'all can help us is to hit the like button Hit the like button, hit the share button. It really, it really help us out a lot. Okay, we starting to get there. What? Well, it, st it stopped. It stood still. All <laughs> right, like button. We need it. We really do. <clears throat> yeah, this is this is uh this is sickening. This is sickening. Okay, we starting to get there. So um, let's let's dig into this, Martin. Let's let's. Yeah, let me uh, let me go like it on my profile. <laughs> right, wanna, exactly. Let me do the same do it. Thing. I'm gonna do it right now. You yeah, know how it works. On everybody else. Yeah, like it. There you go. I'm done. You did. Can't, can't stop me now. I did it. Right, and share it. I had to unsubscribe to. Wow, what happened? It, it's had, been happening to people. I've been hearing stories. Yeah, it's about been going on for a while, like some years, ain't it? That's crazy. Mm -hmm. they, start, they start that stuff back up. Yeah, they start that stuff back up because elections starting to finna come around again. So they probably want to um, shut us up before we get started. But we ain't gonna get too. Well, let me say this. We don't plan we don't. on getting too political. You never know. Uh, we, we may have to. Yeah, what kind of plans are in front of us. Yeah, uh, Lori, we see Lori in the house shouting out the share sign. So let's get it, Merlin. What we got on this, okay. on this, uh, this devil? Uh, before we have him say it in his own words, I'm going to give you a little bit of a background on the monster himself. He was born in 1923, and he died in 2008. Um, during his tenure, he won a uh, Nobel Prize in 1976 for, of all things, 
um, infectious diseases, his work on infec in infectious diseases. Um, the problem with the man himself is that aside from the allegations brought about him, he felt free enough to tell people in an interview with BBC even more than what was known by the public. He was in, he ended up being able to adopt over 55 children from various third world countries. And among the 50, he molested about five of them that came forward. Heaven alone knows what he did to the others that didn't come forward, but there were five that came forward later that said that he did indeed have inappropriate relations with them. He later had a tenure and stayed in residency at the Boston's Children's Hospital, where he frequently, and this is what he admitted to, had relations with children that were there. I, that makes any sense to anyone that he can be a person there dealing with the health and care of children, and adopt them system. and molesting them. In uh, the hospital. In the hospital. Um, and I think if people still don't believe that he's, had guts enough to say it you want to want to prove to them that he said it not really but i will okay now mind you what we're about to show you is indeed graphic in his description and if you look at his behavior you will see that the man thinks that it's good okay all right to my bet and i am no one hold on let's do this different let me fix this up. He gonna fix it, folk. Let me try to fix it. Eyes can try. Because what we have next to drop on you ain't pretty. It's it's bad. So I gotta do this like this, y'all. Let me give me a second. Give me a second. The master at work here. If they hug oh, me and I find them playing with my cock, I say good on you. I play with theirs. And I'll do it now and with great. Murphy thing sexuality on you. Not too far. Boy, what a brainwashed person you are. Oh, I did. Wow. Mm -hmm. God, you sec. Mr. Hulkauer stated he would need a feel full immunity from prosecution prior to any interview. That's pretty um uh, uh you know like when i if i i don't need full immunity right uh, i i hadn't done anything so i don't need full immunity like anyway he needed full immunity so the rest is you know the following information on dr Godusek is known by a biography and what i'll do is i'll put this on my twitter for you guys to 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 download and read i'm all about giving you guys as much information as possible so this stuff here is just his bio arrested, but here arrested on April 4th, 1996 by the Frederick County, Maryland Sheriff's office for two counts of child abuse, two counts of perverted practice. Two. I think Eric, this is the time to show that video clip of this, of this guy, just showing who we are dealing with here. Two counts. Yeah, um, <clears throat> be ready, everybody. And this is graphic. I've never once taken a kid to my bed. They have come to my bed, and I am no one to kick them out. If they hug me and I find them playing with my cock, I say, good on you. I play with theirs. And I will do it now and with great pleasure. When you grow up with a culture that does not condone this, that totally no breaks to it, it, surely it, it must hurt you when you get subjected to a grown-up uh, forcing sexuality on you. Boy, what a brainwashed person you are with three or 400 boys who had sex with me from eight and 10 and 12, 100% have run into my bed, jumped in without my mentioning it and asked for sex. I have never asked for it. I've never, and most of my friends, don't you realize that I was jumping in people's beds, hoping they would take me. All boys want a lover. My you God. And every, the, the idea that these men go after you don't have any point in the world. Now, come on. That's the rule of the game. All right, Eric, I think we. Wow. Um, if you're not speechless after that, I, I don't know what else to tell you. 400, three to 400. And remember these words. That's the rule of the game. And my God, you guys are brainwashed. What a world we live in that 
if you think this is wrong, you get called brainwashed by a rapist, by a pedal. And that's okay. No problem with that. None whatsoever. And you'd be shocked to know how much time he got. You would think life, right? I would think life. Here it is. Listen, you openly admit to having relations with three to 400 boys in a children's hospital. And your excuse is they climbed into your bed. And what was he supposed to do? He don't, who was he to kick him out the bed? And he get, how much was it? A year or something? A year, 12, 12 months. He served 11 and a half of it. One year. One year. On two now, counts. Two <clears throat> counts. Now, I, I don't condone crime. But these are the kind of things that piss the um, general population off. You could do something simple like get caught with a bag of weed and get more time than that. That is crazy. Four, three, four hundred kids. In ten years, I'm gonna say he probably got him a thousand of them because he's nasty. And then you get out of jail, and that it, it's anyway. All right, uh, I know you got more, bro. Yeah, no, no. That look, we have to emphasize this as much as possible. He was allowed to adopt children, live with children, continue to molest children on time until about uh, nineteen. Um, 80 something and then he went and put himself in exile supposed exile up north and he would traverse certain parts of town and come back to his location until his death in 2008 the crazy part of all of this was his research and his connection to the Boston's Children's Hospital mind you the Boston's Children's Hospital said nothing about it no reports never condemned him, has done nothing. They were complicit in his abuse of 400 children. They did nothing. Not posthumously, nothing. I'm going to say this again. Nothing. A children's hospital, a man openly admitting what he did there, nothing. You'll nothing. understand why. You'll understand why in a second. More receipts coming soon. More receipts. Remember, he got his Nobel Prize in 76 because of virology stuff, right? Infectious diseases. Ironically, he worked at the NIH. This is where the Fauci connection comes in. He worked at the NIH people under Mr. Fauci. Directly under Mr. Fauci. From 1984 to, nine, to 2022 is when Mr. Fauci headed up the NIH. And this molester was there until 1987 as head of the neurological department for brain study. Again, this is going to get nasty, so I'm going to try and say it as best as I can to save what's going on with our channel. If you remember some years, not even years, maybe some month, maybe about a year now, there was some information found about the in um, the testing methods that Mr. Fauci used. You remember the dogs and them putting these things in their heads to test on them and the brains were all, you know, to send them crazy. You remember that, that they said you, they found that information about Fauci. The exact same time that those experimentations were being run, this individual was head of that department. Remember, he worked in infectious diseases of where he got his Nobel Prize was. And he took that info to the NIH. The link between him and Fauci comes when Fauci comes out with what he came out with the last few years. We all know what that is. You can't say it. But lo and behold, the same place that he stayed at in the, children's, the Boston Children's Hospital are now pushing for the gender reassignment surgery of minors they say 18 but they had to say 18 because they got caught doing it to a 15 year old 
<laughs> so they changed the mantra of their website to say 18 years old is, is what we go. But they tell you earlier on that we give gender reaffirming conversations to our children at the hospital. What does that mean? It means that they tell the children that if you wait until you're 18, we can do for you whatever you want without your parents knowing. So what do they do? They go, and this is where I'm telling you, I'm going to say stuff, but don't say it. Please do not put in the chat. I'm going to say it again. Do not put in the chat what you know I'm saying. Do not write out in the chat what I'm about to describe. Please. Okay. With gender reassignments comes body mutilation. With body mutilation comes the removal of body parts. Boston Children's Hospital has a thing called the Life Science Initiative that was developed in 2007, a year before this perverted piece of crap died. The Life Sciences was finding ways to create for humans, one, they said, better living standards and longevity. If you've connected the dots, you can see exactly why they did say nothing against him, why he worked in the NIH, and why it is that Mr. Fauci linked up with the Boston's children during that period of time, and why they are now pushing for the gender reassignment, specifically of young girls and boys. More so, ironically, of the girls, because what they go and do is they remove not just the chest, but internal organs as well to create for them the, the idea that they're a boy. It is all backed by the government. <laughs> they got funding from Governor Baker in Massachusetts. They got funding from them to the tune of 15 million. 15 million given to them for this exact reason. Now, if it were that this was a one-off and it was just because of the emergency thing that happened over that two-year span, we could get on board maybe a little bit. But in 2013, there was a case against the Boston Children's Hospital in which a young girl by the name of Justina Pelletier was held in the psychiatric ward at Boston's Children's Hospital because they could. The parents brought her in, telling them that she's sick. We don't know what's wrong, but we believe it's something actually physical. The hospital told them, we don't think it's physical. We think it's mental. She's faking it. Proceeded to, dis to argue with the parents that it was something physical. Filed a 51A, which is to prove that the parents were abusive to the child. Listen to the sequence of this. The parents were abusive to the child because they wanted the hospital to investigate everything physically wrong with the child. You had a child molester performing acts on children to the tune of 400. You didn't file a 51A then. The parents come in telling you the child is sick. You're a hospital. You file a 51A against the parents to remove the parents' custody from the child and keep the child there for a whole year. Limited parental visitations. The courts eventually gave the children the child back in 2014. The parents filed a lawsuit that culminated in 2020, and they lost it. They filed it for negligence. Negligence on the hospital's part. And this lawsuit failed. Why is all that important? If you have any ties to Boston Children's, if you have any money that you give to Boston's children, if you live anywhere near Boston's children, understand that what they want is your child. They're not really there to treat your child. They're looking for two things, to remove from the child something that they need and want, <laughs> and to promote in the child's mind the no need for parents. They already started with that one child in, in 13, and they were successful. What does that tell you? That they have the government on their side. Gender reassignment, body parts removal, 
and allowing a 400 body count pedophile to live within their walls for more than six years and have said nothing to the effect of helping the ones that were hurt by this man. But instead you go out and get his boss to head up departments in the government to fund the very thing that this clown was doing in secret in those rooms. Now, can somebody make that make sense for me, please? And I want to, while we um, got a moment to breathe um, through all this, I'm curious. I'm just really curious. Um, give us a, a yes or a no. Have you heard about this before? I just want to see. I just want to see if, if anybody's heard about this before. Because this should have been plastered every, over every billboard in America right now to this day. This guy should almost be the poster board for pedos. Look at him. Right there on tape with a thousand percent arrogance and admitted he did this to hundreds of kids. And I know this might sound crazy, but I'm willing to bet it was thousands. Easily. I'm going to say 90% of the people haven't even heard about this. No, that everyone's saying no. This remember, though, remember, nuts. he was he was in 51 from 1951. He was involved in children's medical. 1951, he died in 2008. And his last interaction with Boston General was in 1986. From That's 51 crazy. to 86. That is insane. Very nothing right in the in the hospital. This happened in a hospital. So if you don't, if you don't understand that the mainstream media is super dirty, I don't know what else to tell you. This is, this is like way, way, way off the charts, way off the charts. This should have been something that, that should have been uh, talked about, been talked about for years. And and he should have been in prison till he died, or he should have died from the from an injection or something. It's just it's ridiculous. Okay, get this out of here. <laughs> okay, man. Toss the I'm telling you, yeah, I'm trying to trying to talk in that thing ringing in my ear, but it's it's crazy. He should he should have got the he should have got the death sentence, no, hands down. He, he got off he got off easy. He got off easy. And, and but but see the thing is if if you if you look at it, these are the same people that are um, um setting this thing up for the day. So this was a this plan has been in in effect for a whole lot of years. This go way back. Got kids changing gender parts on the low low and kidnapping kids. So somebody said and once somebody said in the comment section, where uh, where were the parents? The parents should have been in trouble too. But it's they they was at a hospital. You know what I'm saying? So you're taking your kids to a hospital and they telling them, you know how it was, especially back in the day, oh, you can't come in here. Uh, then they filed and got the police. You got to leave. You got to leave your kid. I mean, listen, you can fight for your kids. And, I done been, and I've been through a situation with my son. I ain't even going to get into it right now. But at the, at the end of the day, I mean, how many people are willing to have a shootout with the police? You know what I'm saying? And, and then end up dead. I think you'd be better off to stay alive and free and try to fight it, but unfortunately, they they put they put a lot of people in a bad situation. Um. And and the the bottom line is a lot of that stuff right now today, guaranteed, right now today, the same stuff is going on, and it's probably some of that same stuff in that same hospital. Hmm. Put these putting these kids to sleep. Oh, they need they need rest. We need you to leave them here for a couple of days, and don't bother them. Why they sedated all up and doing whatever they want to do to them, stealing, stealing stuff from them. And I ain't talking about money out their pockets. And 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 you won't know till years later. It's crazy. Hmm. And, and okay. So you have this man doing this to 400 kids. You have a hospital that already has balls to go and file an injunction against parents because the parents have a concern. Do you think that it's far-fetched to believe that these people will take children in under the prince that they're sick, 
abuse them physically and sexually. Then the child comes out thinking that they're gay and then goes back to the hospital that caused this for gender reassignment. They are creating their own moneymaker. We get funding for genital reassignment. We keep children when something is not wrong necessarily. We can kick the parents out whenever we want, especially with the new you can't be here because of the face diaper thing. We do what we need to do. It's what we call gender reaffirming conversations. You do what you want. So physically, they're already feeling what you did to them. Then you tell them, oh, you're only feeling that way because you must need this. And if that's what you want, we can make it feel better. But tell you what, since we can't do it now, we'll do it when you're 18. No need to talk to your parents about it. We know what you feel. In fact, you could stay here a little longer. You should, you, should get, you should get 10 years for even saying something like that to a kid. 10 years for just saying that. I mean, really, you should get something else, but I'm being nice. Giving people a chance, I guess, but they, they need a minimum of 10 years just for saying that. They got mandatory minimums on uh, drugs. Put a mandatory minimum on this. Th listen, this is far worse than selling drugs. And I'm not promoting selling drugs. I'm against it. Exponential. I don't, I don't. I don't do the drug thing, right? But this is far worse than selling drugs. Far. And the time is way low, way low. A year. He should. He shouldn't. Have, look. Let me tell y'all something. He shouldn't have been able. Let, let me hit this real quick. Uh oh. He shouldn't have been able to. Um, thanks, Katie May. He shouldn't have shouldn't have been able to get out ever, or even make a plea bargain, or tell on enough people to get no one year. He should have had a minimum of thirty. No matter, I don't care if he told on the president and the whole crew. This is bad, but this is what we like. Yeah, you had one up. Where is it now? I did. Yeah, I thought you put one up. I don't or think so. Out? No, I didn't. No, I didn't put one up. Oh, I must have made a mistake and put it up. And yeah, push. yeah. Um. One other thing, too, um, is this statement by um, Boston's Children's. The Gender Multi-Speciality Service at Boston's Children's Hospital is committed to providing the highest level of individualized, safe, listen to the wording, and I know Corey going to catch it in a minute here. When he sees it, he's going to be like, wow. <laughs> a highest level of individualized, safe, and affirmative care to gender diverse and transgender individuals and their families. Founded in 2007, GEMS was the first major program in the U.S. to focus on gender diverse and tra transgender adolescents. That's not 18. I want people to understand that adolescent is not, not an 18-year-old. Since that time, we have expanded our program to welcome patients from, listen to the ages. This is there on their website. Wow. Okay. Ages 3 to 25. Ages 3 to 25. three years old to 25 years old. Then they want to lie to you and tell you that, oh, it's 18 year old, it's 18. You said specifically three in the same breath as gender affirming surgery to 25 years old. I, I, want, I want anyone on this planet to, to tell me if that facility should still be standing. Everybody in there should be in Alcatraz. No, they should turn, they should get all the kids out of there and turn it into a prison and leave them right in there with all the equipment and let them work on each other and keep them stuck in there. Now, it's not over. 
again, this is the last bit of information that I'm going to hand out because the rest is just too flipping angering. This is their approach. Okay. Their approach. And I, I want to, I'm going to bring this up so I can make sure you see it as I'm reading it because it, it, it's not believable until you see it for yourself. It really ain't. Again, yeah. this is their website. Oh, I forget. We can't do that. <laughs> it ain't going to look right. <laughs> no, I, I'll take it. It'll have that barrier. Okay, go ahead, because I need them to read this. All right, All right, here we go. At GEMS, our mission is to assess and care for gender-diverse children, teens, and young adults through excellence in clinical care, advancement of research, and training other clinicians. We take a team approach to gender affirmative care, partnering with experts from many different specialities, both at Boston Children's and the community. They include primary care, adolescent medicine, individual group and family therapists, plastic surgery, reproductive endocrinology, urology, gynecology, schools of academic institutions and LGBTQ support groups and organization. Together we provide physical, psychological assessment. In other words, you tell the children what you want them to believe. That's not, that's not sugarcoat this crap. Yeah, it's okay to be a funny. Yeah, ongoing medical care and advanced referral, additional referral as needed. They are intentionally, this is their words, their website, not my own. I'm not making this crap up. They are intentionally going after three to 25 year olds, indoctrinating them with LGBTQ propaganda, telling the children that whatever you feel might be reality for you so we can chop off your penis and your breasts and make you into a confused individual that will later probably kill yourself. Meanwhile, the stuff we took from you, thank you. Now we get to keep that. Okay. This is, okay, I, I just said earlier that we weren't going to get too political. And I don't know where this is going to go. And I don't care at this point. And, and, I, and I, really, I really have a question. And this is a sincere, sincere question. And for those of you that this is directed to, please don't take it wrong yet. Let's just go through the process. And I don't want nobody to dog nobody out for what political side they own. Okay. We got to stop that. But we, but we do have to tell the truth. So let's get to make that clear. Also, is there anybody on the left that's here that understands what's going on here and who's responsible for this stuff? Please somebody tell me if you're on the left, have you finally come to the conclusion? Wait a minute. Hmm. We got to stop this. Have you finally come to the conclusion that the people that you've been voting for are killing our children? Have you finally concluded that they set them up to be molested, raped, and other things for other things and do not put it in the comment section? Have we concluded that yet? We got people admitting to molesting, raping, having relations with hundreds of children and out in one year. He's connected to Fauci. We all know what he did. Have we finally come to the conclusion that we should not be voting for these people? Hmm. Nobody's saying it. No one nobody admitted it. It's easy to understand, Erica, why that's good. Not it's easy. This is easy. Easy, easy answer. Easy answer. Easy answer. If you can get the next generation, you got the world. They have to get the next generation. They have to get them before their minds can seasonally get in line with the truth. But they have to. They have to create for them. And this is why they want to isolate parents. The government has now created terroristic ideas of what a parent is if they talk up against the school that's even doing crap to the children. You can't even defend your child no more. Legally, you can't defend your child. 
So if you get the children's minds working the way you want them to work, when they become adults, they will put into place the things you've been wanting them to put into place and making it easy for the next generation. And you get even more kids on your side. Ask the devil why. The devil has all intentions to hurt the one thing that God created, and that's mankind. That's the basic. Devil hates God, and to hate God more, he attacks God's creation. And so this is what he's trying to say. One of, one of the ways to show that you don't have power or to make it look like you don't have power is to change something you did. Simply Simple things like, I'll come in your house and redecorate it. I'll move your furniture around to show you who in control. I'll change your body parts. I will change your kids' body parts and make them think they something they ain't to show my power. It's fun because it's evil. And the devil is evil. We always find ourselves asking, now, why would they do that? Yeah. It's a good question, but it's easy to answer. Because it's evil and they love doing evil things. And then they got they they reap so many benefits from it during the process. Merlin explained that earlier. So during the process of changing things, you get um, okay. I'm a uh, I'm a good cook, and I have to you know I cut my chickens up, you know, and clean them and everything. And a lot of times you'll take some of the scraps and boil them and feed them to your dog. Okay. So there's another benefit there. Just think about that. So these are the things that's happening. And, and th these are just some of the reasons why. So they they reap the benefits through so many sources. It's like it's crazy. You won't believe it. But we just can't get into all of them. And it's it's um, I mean, we just can't get into it. But the bottom line is it's happening. And there are things that we can do about these things. We can we can start to listen. I know a lot of people say some some girl, okay, she said, explain what on the left means, please. I do not identify with either party. If I hope that was rhetorical or whatever, but or no, I think, no, she's usually doesn't deal in the politics stuff. If, I'm, if it's if it's aid, you say she what now? She doesn't deal in the politics stuff. It's K. No, uh -uh. it's not K. 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 Eighty. No. Okay, not right here. Please explain what on the left means, please. So, um, I don't, I do not, yeah, yeah, you probably do though. That's that's what they do when they say, um, they be on the left and they don't want to say it when they find out stuff about them and they just say that. But the thing is. Um, we have to get them out of there and, 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 and the politics do matter. You know what I'm saying? And if they don't matter, then it don't matter if you vote or not. So you may as well, I hope that made sense to you since it don't matter, just go ahead and take the chance anyway and vote against that stuff. And let's see what happens for us. I mean, we got to do something. We can't just sit here and do nothing. And if it don't matter, then why do you care? You know what I'm saying? If it don't matter why you bring it up to me, if it don't matter how you vote, and I'm not talking about you, decide. I'm talking about people, period. If it don't matter how you vote, why do you care if I vote? Makes sense. If it if nothing's gonna happen, why do you care if I do it? So what? Let me do it. And maybe you should try it just, just for just just in case it works, just in case you're wrong. You know what I'm saying? We gotta start speaking out against this stuff and stop supporting this mess because it's getting out of control. I'm telling you right now, as far fetched as we think it is, one day we're gonna look up and they're gonna be knocking on the door telling you to turn in your babies hmm. and walking right out the door with them. And if you try to stop them, they're going to have a drone sitting right there to shoot you in your forehead. We have to stop ignoring this stuff and not thinking it's a big deal and, and stop taking on the attitude that, well, you know, I'm half dead. So by the time I die, this stuff will be over with. You know what I'm saying? You hmm. leave people behind kids, grandkids, uh, babies. This is crazy. You know what I'm saying? We got to start advocating about this stuff and, and stop being so scared to speak out against it. It's terrible. And I know people going to call y'all kind of names and uh, say you got a tinfoil hat on and, and all this stuff. But these going to be the same clowns calling, talking about, hey, hey, what should I do? What should I do? No, you should go get an aluminum foil hat and put on your head. <laughs> That's what you do. Don't call me now. <laughs> you know, it's bad, man. It, it is. It is. But I think the bigger issue I see here is this aspect of parents becoming so defeated and not in the actual fight, just the identification of the enemy. Like, like a lot of people don't even want to identify the enemy because they're living in this stupid little bubble of, oh, the government going to take care of me. 
left and right, left and right. Just let's make that clear. Both the people that want pedophilia and the people that say they're against it, but they both want government to fix it. You don't want to start at home. You don't want to start by keeping people you're, that you love out of their way. You don't want to do that. You want the government to fix it. You don't even include God in any of this stuff. You, you just run about trying to damage control out that fire, out this fire. Meanwhile, you're running around and your cape is the one starting all the fire because that's on fire. And you're just running around. Each bushel that you put out gets relit every time you run past it because you're not addressing where the problem is. Meanwhile, your children are going to suffer for it. They're going to be put into the care of people like this disgusting piece of trash. They're going to continue to get molested. You're going to continue to have more mentally deranged children that either go to the suicide or go to killing other people. Or they get so confused that they can't decide whether they're male or female. And they allow these morons and evil people to chop them up. Or give them so, some sort of sterility drug to kill what God created. To remove from the next generation all manner of choice by telling them something that's confusing and completely against their nature. Creating a brand new breed of people that see evil as the new good. And it's been working. It has been working. Now, today, more than ever, I believe, more than ever, today the lies have been seen as true. Everything evil is good. Oh, you want to be a, a, a transsexual? Sure, that's good. That's good that you're finding yourself. Oh, you like to dress up like the devil and grind on his crotch? Perfect. That's expressing yourself. You want to go ahead and kill people. You might have a reason for it, and it's okay. Now, we have a choice ahead of us. That choice is this. We who are smarter than the system and are not going to allow our children to fall for this anymore, we have two choices. Pull them completely from this environment or take the time it needs to combat the indoctrination taking place in their school. Make time for your kids. Let them know the door is open. Be more integral in their life than the police and the system is. Make sure that you are talking to them about the things that matter and not the school. Whole school sex ed nonsense that every time I hear an adult say they're going to talk to a child about sex ed, I want to smack their face behind them. Do listen to me. Let me tell you something. Insane. Let me, let me, I got to, I got to tell y'all this. Wait, hold on. Um, so this is going on right now. And I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just say this because if they don't feel like you're doing that wrong, it shouldn't be a problem. But in a school that right now, right now, they doing this, uh, sex ed class. Don't put my daughter in that. That is not your job to teach my daughter that. And listen, she's in the seventh grade. The seventh grade. Why are you talking to these kids about that? Why? <sighs> Man. Seasoning. Oh. Listen, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about me. Okay, now this is about me. I wouldn't feel comfortable talking to nobody's children about that at that age. At no age do you have any business talking to somebody's children about that. That is not your job, and you should not feel comfortable doing it. Think about what you're doing. And I know sometimes people don't think, but you're actually introducing them to it and making them more curious. How do I know? Happened to me. We took that class <laughs> in school. And all we did all month is talked about it and talked about it. And this is the thing that y'all wanted to do to our children. You had to take the class when you was in school, so you know you know the effect it had on you, and then you go around and teach it to somebody. I don't get that, but hey, my name is Corey, and I'm different. But no, I don't. I didn't. I didn't let mine indulge in that class. Not even. Not even. Not even a consideration. Not even a consideration. Nor should I, it be. 
nor should it be. No, it shouldn't. And you don't, you, you know, that's some random old, dis, disgusting, perverted, who heaven alone knows what he does in his house with the, the conversation. He oh, If he's recording the children talking, you don't know any of that stuff. And you're going to come and talk to my daughter and my child and my son about his privates. Are you insane, bro? Are, yeah. are you looking to leave Earth early? Are, are you really looking to vacate Earth that quickly? Because if you come with my, to my child with that nonsense, I, I get wind of it. I'm not the kind of dude that's just going to be like, I'll send him a letter. No, no trust me, I'm, I'm in the school. And I'll be one of those crazy people that be walking down the hall asking where that particular teacher is. And I need to see everything about you. I want your entire background in my hands in five minutes. I need to know everything about you. If you're talking to my child about sex, I want to know who you are, where you were born, all your family history. I want to know everything about you. I should be able to comb through your entire history. You better know it. Because if you're going to come, to, bro, bro, you better hope that you're, you were ordained by God. You better hope you have some sort of a, a, a scroll with God's signature on it to save you. Because if you don't got that, trust and believe you're not walking out of my, my presence to go talk to another child about nothing to do with sex, male or female. I want to make sure I make that clear, male or female. My hands ain't going to have a gender specific landing spot. If you're talking to my child without my permission about sex, I only have one thing to think about that you have an ulterior motive with my child. You can't have anything positive to be adding to my child's life because you, you didn't you didn't birth them. You didn't su supply seed. Y you aren't raising them. I am. I'm sending you them in order for you to teach them a subject, math, Spanish, English, geography. I'm not sending them to you for you to touch on them, put them in place today. I didn't tell you to put them and teach them about their body parts. I didn't do, I didn't give you that right. I didn't. And it's, and it's getting worse. So here we have Faith said, now the uh, the new curriculum are discussed uh, grade three instead of grade six. <laughs> it, it shouldn't even be grade six. Shouldn't be anything. Like, not, like, listen, this is why we got to get these families back together. So, so that we can talk to our children. This is like crazy to me. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And I would have never saw this coming. Never. Never. But you know why? I only didn't see it coming for one reason. Because I didn't pay attention. If you just simply pay attention and look, all the information is right in your face. They doing it right in your face. But what happened is we get so many people get so tied up in all these different people that's pushing this stuff. And then your pride say, but it ain't just them. It ain't just them. All right. Well, whoever it is need to be held accountable. Period. And we got to stop supporting them. We got to stop pushing this stuff because if you if you think about it, if you know about it and you're not doing nothing about it, then you may as well be on the street corner pushing it with a sign promoting it, just like these clowns. Hmm. All I know is, listen, pay better attention and be more bold. When it comes to your kids, I'm talking about you got to be bold. And you can't care what people think. You can't make the, the teachers or the principals make you feel like you're going too far. I don't let them let me feel that way. And, and, if, and if they try to make me feel that way, that's fine. That's okay. Uh, absolutely. That's okay. Um, but I'm coming anyway. Cause I got, I got to save mine. I got to save them, and and if I can, and in, in, in the process, I do what I can for the other ones. But we can't, we can't keep going for this, y'all. It's 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 bad. You know what I'm saying? There's there's nothing good about it, and I don't understand how we can continue to just sit around and watch it as if you know we we're not we're not taking this stuff serious, and we're not taking it serious, and it's a shame. And anybody who's not speaking out against it that know anything about it should be in, in prison too. That's where you ought to be. I stand on that. Period. Period. That's, it. That's it. So listen, ladies, um, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be at um, 930. We got another show. It's called The Mix. Type it in. The Mix. The Mix. The Mix. The Mix. Or you can go to our YouTube channel and scroll to the bottom. And uh, that channel is down there too, along with other channels uh, under Fair Media. It's, it's called The Mix. Click on there. We've been on at 930. Uh, we got uh, who will be joining us. 
um, royalty be joining us, joining us tonight. We're having a very interesting conversation you do not want to miss. Hey, wake up before you go to sleep. Peace. We out of here. 